The more I've been exploring things like my personal style, my shopping, and even my wardrobe, I'm realizing that so much of what I've learned falls down to my habits. After all, it's the little things that we choose to do or not do every day that really shape up our lives and how we live them. For years, I was in the habit of things like hitting snooze in the morning. I still definitely do that. Impulse buying whenever I saw a shiny new thing that I thought I wanted. And opening up my wardrobe to a closet full of clothes and feeling like I had nothing to wear. And it was when I started to unlearn some bad habits and trained myself to adopt new ones that I was able to achieve things that I felt were such a struggle like finding my own personal style and falling back in love with my wardrobe. So in today's video, I wanna share with you the habits that are helping me make the most out of my clothes. And I wanna thank Athletic Greens for sponsoring this video, but I'll talk about them more a little later on. Number one was getting organized and staying that way. When I first decided to go on a personal style journey and really address my compulsive shopping and impulse buying habits, one of the first things I did was start with a good declutter. I have a video all about how I organize my closet and keep it clutter free right here, and I'll leave it linked in the description for you, but through those declutters, I was able to reorganize my wardrobe in a way that makes sense to me, and more importantly, made it so getting dressed was really easy. And by staying organized, I mean that I created an organizational system that I stick to. So that means hanging things up when I'm done with them, putting away laundry in the same way every time, folding my clothes and keeping them in order, putting things away where I decide they belong. And that way for me, things stay organized, so I continue to stay inspired every time I open up my wardrobe. Habit number two is not settling when I decide I want something, aka not going for the dupe, unless the dupe is better than the original. I found in the past with my shopping behaviors, I would end up really, really wanting something, but I would never allow myself to wait for the original thing that I wanted, either because it was too expensive, it wasn't in stock anymore, or some other reason that was preventing me from buying the original. So I would go on some other wild goose chase trying to research duplicates and read reviews, and oftentimes I would find something that was very similar, but ultimately I would always end up feeling disappointed by that, and over time, I usually would end up buying the original thing I wanted anyway. So I'd always end up spending double the money and ending up with double the clutter. And I've experienced this with not only clothing, but with things like furniture, technology. So it's not just specific to my wardrobe, but when it comes to my wardrobe, nowadays, if there's something that I decide I really like and really want, then I'm going for the original thing. And that way, when I'm ready to buy something, it's the thing that I actually want, not the thing that I feel like I settled for. Habit number three is new to me this year, and that is by making an effort to mindfully add color into my wardrobe. I know I'm not really doing that today. We are in an all black everything moment, but I recently had a color consultation done with Sina from Use Less right here on YouTube. You can watch that video right here. It was so much fun, but within that colored consult, I found out that I am a deep, cool and clear color type. So that means that based on my hair color, my skin tone, my eye color, that deeper, darker, more saturated colors tend to look better on me. And since I've made that discovery, I've had a lot of fun incorporating some of those colors into my wardrobe. So the habit or the effort of adding a little bit more color into my wardrobe, I think, has been quite a lot of fun and I'm excited to be able to do it in a more methodical and mindful way by sort of understanding what colors work best for me. I think it just saves a lot of time, money, and even frustration when it comes to getting dressed and feeling like your wardrobe is like a little bit off. And the pieces that I do have in my wardrobe, nowadays I know that they're colors that mostly work for me and because I know that now, I'm making a lot more efforts to rotate them into outfits on a regular basis. And speaking of good habits, I wanna thank the sponsor of today's video, Athletic Greens. I'm so excited to be working with them again and I've been incorporating the AG1 supplement into my daily routine since about January. It's been really good. Plus the fact that it's green makes me just feel like I'm being extra healthy. 
Athletic Greens is an essentialist nutrition company that are all about simplifying your daily health routine. The AG1 supplement contains 75 vitamins, minerals, probiotics, adaptogens, and superfoods all in one daily serving with the aim to help support your focus, energy, gut health, and digestion without the need to take a bunch of different pills or supplements every day. The AG1 supplement is dairy-free, gluten-free, nut-free, and it doesn't contain eggs, sugar, or GMOs. Athletic Greens is also offering my community a free one-year supply of their vitamin D drops and five free travel packs with your first purchase of AG1. So if you're interested in giving them a try, it'll all be in the description below. Thanks, Athletic Greens. Now let's get back into the video. Habit number four is taking and making opportunities to style lesser worn items in my wardrobe. I have a lot of pieces in my wardrobe that I've decided I don't want to declutter just yet, but I also find I have a bit of a hard time styling them in my everyday life. So when an opportunity to get a little bit dressed up comes up, like having a meeting or a date night or something like that, I like to take that opportunity by grabbing a lesser worn item in my wardrobe and styling it for that event. And if I am a little bit more boring slash nothing's really going on, which let's be real is my life most of the time, then I like to create opportunities to style the piece. So maybe I'm gonna walk literally up the road five minutes to go get a coffee. Maybe that's the chance I'll take to style that pair of shoes that I have or that really cool blazer or that purse that I've been meaning to take out of its bag. If you notice an opportunity coming up, embrace it or have some fun and create one yourself. But for me, the key is always taking action in your wardrobe and actually styling it. It's one thing to open up your wardrobe to see everything you have, but it's quite another to start taking them off the hangers and unfolding them and putting an outfit together. And I think once you take that action step, that's when your creative juices start flowing and it becomes a lot more fun and exciting to get reacquainted with your wardrobe. The one thing I find that also happens when you start styling lesser worn pieces in your wardrobe a little bit more often is that they start to feel less off or costumey over time because you start to actively integrate that piece into your more regular wardrobe rotation. I find a lot of the pieces I don't reach for that often feel like they're a little bit of an outlier in my wardrobe and I've sort of mentally designated them as like a special occasion piece. So by pulling these pieces out and integrating them into my style a little bit more often, it sort of just helped me let go of that whole assumption that this is a special occasion piece only. That I think in the past has sort of pushed me to pass over that item in my wardrobe. Number five was that I learned to stop boxing myself into rules. I'd say most of these rules pertain to minimalism, but it could be rules about fashion and what colors go together. I do think having some rules in your wardrobe and around certain styling things that work for you can be helpful. Like you know what works for you, you know what doesn't. And also sort of creating boundaries around your wardrobe or your shopping, all of that I think can be really helpful. But when those rules start to feel really stressful or limiting in any way, then I think that's when you can sort of reevaluate how helpful those rules really are for you. And there's something really fun about being unbothered by that kind of stuff. <laughs> Habit number six was learning to let my fixations fade. If I learned anything at all in getting myself out of over $120,000 of student loan debt and overcoming a compulsive shopping habit, it's that there will always be something to want. And sometimes you can embrace that and it's a lot of fun. And other times you can allow yourself to forget about it. I think I say this in almost every single video, but the way that I have really taught myself to delay that gratification and let those fixations pass by out of my memory is by creating a wish list. And I say it in every single video because it is the number one most effective way for me to be able to do this. All I do is keep it on my phone and every time I see something that tickles my fancy, I write it down and I give myself a cooling off period. So it creates this cycle of wanting, delaying, forgetting, and wanting again, because that kind of is the cycle of wanting to begin with. There's always gonna be something that sparks your interest, tickles your fancy. And I think one of the best ways to sort of rein in that impulse is just by creating some distance from it in the first place. Number seven is to make sure that I am maintaining my clothes. 
So this is things like making sure that my shirts are steamed and not wrinkly so I can just grab and go and wear the one that I wanna wear that day. Depilling my coats or sweaters when they need them. Making sure that I'm neatly folding things and putting them away so it's a grab and go. Because what I found that's really helped me sort of simplify getting dressed and making it really easy is by making my clothes accessible and grab and go. If things are wrinkly or looking a little bit shabby or smelly, things like that, then I am less likely to wear them and use them. So I like to take good care of my clothes, keep them in a good state of repair and maintenance so that they last longer, but I'm more likely to wear them. Habit number eight is outfit repeating. Now, my version of outfit repeating is not really wearing the exact same thing every single day. I don't have 10 versions of the same t-shirt, blazer, and jeans that I just wear every single day. I prefer the idea of adopting a style uniform that consists of a specific formula so that the pieces that I choose to grab may be different, but the way I put them together is fairly the same, so I always feel like myself. But it's essentially the habit I've gotten into to help me get really good use and rotation out of my clothes without feeling limited, restricted, or bored by them. So I've noticed that the more I outfit repeat and play around with that style formula, the better and more confident I feel in my clothes and about my personal style. And nowadays I feel like I'm getting a lot of really good use out of them because it all sort of works. It works together, it's the same formula, and we're repeating it. And the final habit is shopping my closet. This was definitely a habit that I had to learn because my default setting was always adding more and shopping for new in my wardrobe. Honestly, I was really never in the habit of taking inspiration that I found online or in the streets and trying to recreate it with my clothes that I already had. Instead, I would opt to spend my time searching high and low on the internet for the exact item that I saw, and I couldn't settle for anything less. Never mind that a lot of these pieces did not work for me. Never mind that a lot of them would really only cater to my fantasy self. And let's not forget that half of these items ended up getting decluttered in the end anyway. I think if you are on a journey to find your personal style and making efforts to shop better and buy better, the first place we really need to go is in our own wardrobes. And for many years when it came to my own personal style habits, that was the last place that I looked. So I find nowadays, even though I do still shop and add new things to my wardrobe, I still always try to remind myself to check out what I've got first. Oftentimes shopping your closet really helps quell that feeling like you wanna spend money. You're reminded of what you already have and you have lots of opportunities to play dress up, and rediscover oldies but goodies. And to me, that's been the habit that's been probably the most instrumental in helping me find my personal style, but it's probably also saved me the most money. So those are some of the habits that have helped me get the most out of my wardrobe. Let me know if there's any habits that have helped maximize the use out of your own clothes and how that may have helped your style and your shopping. Thanks again to Athletic Greens for sponsoring this video. If you wanna try them out and get a few free samples, check out the link in the description. If you like this video, please do me a favor and give me a thumbs up. It is the greatest way that you can help support my channel and help it grow. And if you're new here, please subscribe. We'd love to have you. See you in the next one, guys. Bye.